And uh, yeah, now we will conclude with, uh, with Tony Brink, who is uh, our CTO at Focus Center. Uh, he has a very long experience in the wind sector, in the medium and big wind as well. And uh, he, among other things, is the responsible person for the test center. I will take the presentation. Yeah, thank you, Daniel. And uh, you have to live with that. I'm uh, I caught a cold and at the wind fair, so uh, but let's see. Uh, presentation of the Fox Center is almost not needed. Also, he did a good job in presenting Fox <laughs> Center, so I think uh, I can just uh, skip that part <laughs> uh, more or less. Yeah, yeah, I have it here. So, again, thank you, Daniel, for for the introduction, and uh, again, welcome to our sixth uh, international setup. Uh, for those of you who is new in this line of uh, or, or row of uh, of of, uh, of webinars, uh, then we are a small NGO that runs a uh, small test center for, for small wind up to two hundred square meter row size, uh, founded in nineteen eighty three. Uh, and uh, we have a lot of visitors in all kinds of renewables because we believe in in a hundred percent renewable uh, society. But um, small wind for those of you who is a little bit in doubt, then uh, we change the date legislation to a new issue here on third of November, and uh, the main uh, changes is uh, in in point two, where we have the forty square meter. Danish rules where we had some easy way of uh, of approving wind turbines that has been limited to only for uh, prototypes and for home builders. So you're not certifying up against the 40 square meter rules you are, and you're not basing your zero production on, 40, on the old 300 uh, neutral meter square in, in uh, per, per square meter road size anymore. Otherwise, we're still struggling with the, with the two points I marked in red. The, the maximum height of 25 meters, uh, we would very much love to go higher because the wind is better. And, and uh, But even worse is the 0.6 due to the turbulence criteria that all these, these turbines are designed out from 18% of turbulence. And we all know that near buildings and, and, and trees and so on, they, they see 30 or 40% of turbulence very easily. So uh, it is challenging that we can't get them out in the open landscape. And as also mentioned, then we were also at the fair in Husum uh, and uh, we'll be there in 22, at least as visitors. I don't know if we'll get a booth there. This year we were very, very lucky that we got the booth of the World Wind Energy Association. So we only had to pay the fee for being co exhibitor and that helped us financially quite a, a deal. Uh, then we uh, then we made some uh, new uh, approach this year that uh, we uh, North Fox Center is also part of the Danish Association for for small and medium sized wind. Therefore, we uh, we agreed that we would like to promote uh, our members at the at the fair at the same time, and then they could have these benefits of being part of the Danish Association, and hopefully more small wind manufacturers will join us join the organization by uh, being uh, represented. Uh, at the fair. So we had uh, three or four uh, small wind manufacturers on board that we represented at the same time. But uh, as we, uh, and we also were aware of that coming there with the small wind test site and try to sell the services uh, in, a, in a limited exhibition at, at Utrum uh, would be a challenge and therefore we needed uh, more activity on the booth. But um, as also said, uh, and then often, often we have been very lucky in, in reaching the uh, a uh, new startup that, like uh, like uh, Tandem Wind, is, is located at the regional offices because they can also not afford a booth, so they normally can stand at the regional offices like uh, Brandenburg or Westfalen or, or other uh, states in, in Germany. Uh, so, um, but uh, they were not present this year. Then uh, a short market update. Uh, it's not uh, very promising. We have uh, in uh, 2020, now I only, this graph is only showing up to 19 and the tendency is showing a down, a down going uh, line and it continues down because 2020 was uh, 
five five uh, small wind turbines quick connected, and some of these I, I'm even doubting whether they were uh, replacements. Uh, but then, uh, as, as I said, we were a member of the Danish Association that we just have held our our General Assembly. I can only uh, encourage the manufacturers, foreign and domestic, to sign up and uh, be part of this association if, if possible. It's a very, very uh, reasonable fee of 1,000 Danish kroners per year. And uh, but we just decided here in the latest General Assembly to, to make a white book on all the stupid legislation we, we find. Uh, and we all know of the uh, what you're not allowed to and what you cannot do and uh, height and uh, distant limitations, uh, but not only in small wind, but also when you want to charge your electric vehicle uh, with, by means of a small wind. Uh, because uh, at the moment, uh, the energy prices in Denmark are sky high uh, and uh, consumers are, are complaining because the government is trying to promote uh, heat pumps and now the, some of the customers have installed heat pumps and now the in, in, in recent times, uh, the the, in, the raw energy price was four euro cents, and now it's thirty euro cents, which is equal to the wholesale price. So the wholesale price is uh, is uh, twenty six uh, euro cent higher than uh, the normal. And uh, when you have a heat pump for as uh, as heating, then a normal family will pay have to pay five thousand Danish krona extra per year for for using a heat pump. So they're not satisfied with the government's approach to electrify Denmark. And, and the rural part of Denmark, especially. But the test center today, here yeah, I have a picture of vertical wind turbines. Unfortunately, they are all taken down due to that they were not working and are not over, in operation. So, but I, I, in some ways, I missed it because we have a lot of school children and a lot of students coming, and uh, it's difficult to explain them what a vertical wind turbine is without having one. So, Maybe it was a fall taking it down, but on the other hand, we need the test site to, to do real testing. Uh, as here, as Otto mentioned, we just changed the display recently, and here you see the plate on the site. But um, he gave an introduction uh, to that. This is our old test site where, where he's uh, currently present. He's, he's planning to go on, on Hunball, where there's a better wind with his 18 meter tower. And at Hunball, we have uh, still the, the, the three existing uh, turbines. Uh, two turbines, which is the front one in the front here, is being taken down very, very shortly. Uh, they're finished and they have decided not to continue with the eight square meter wind turbine. So they, uh, they have a new approval for the six and the 40. Um, the six and the 10 kilowatt with a boat with a 40 square meter rotor. So they just renewed their license so they can run for another five year just before the end of the year where the rules were changed. Um, so um, they're in business at least for another five years and then they will take, uh, since there's no market, there's no reason to approve a new turbine. Otherwise, uh, and, and on that location, we have uh, a AMAR wind coming in, they just uh, put a turbine in boxes and uh, will be shipped here shortly. Uh, I think uh, Mohammed gave a presentation at our last conference, so uh, I don't know if he's still on board. I saw him this morning, but otherwise, uh, hope to see you soon, Mohammed, and you're very welcome. But otherwise, we still receive all kinds of, of, uh, of customers. Still still people showing up with an old PMG from a washing machine that wants to, to become a wind turbine manufacturer. Uh, and it's very, very simple rates. We start with a price of a thousand euro per month for renting a foundation, quick connection and everything. So, and then you can add on from there or or get an offer for a, a full year or whatever you, you make. Yeah, and then the uh, Fund Center is also part of a uh, standardization. And I can only encourage you if you are uh, if you're keen on working with standardization, you should go to a national body and try to get signed on or up for, for being part of a standardization working, especially in small wind. As a lot of the previous speakers have mentioned, then the standards is ready to be uh, to be updated, so there's some work in front of us. Some of some of the initiatives have already started, so I can only encourage again to, to sign up. And uh, I know uh, then Otto, as he explained to his turbine, he has a lot of uh, of different uh, uh, offsets he can he can place in the turbine. So we actually decided that we'll try to do some raw measurement on. Uh, 
to message and real rates on these turbines because we can run it in upwind or downwind configuration, tail or active your upwind or downwind, and, and, and then try to measure some uh, some real rates that could be used in some open fast uh, simulation or, or something to help the, the next step of uh, a simplified load uh, modeling. Uh, Together with NREL or the task the task group in, uh, in task forty one, uh, I know uh, Brett Somerswell is uh, in charge of this. And uh, if some of you are interested, I know it's uh, it's mainly an, an American event, and then uh, task forty one has been invited also. But if you're interested, I think just go ahead and ask Brent if it's possible to join the the upcoming workshop. Then he can say go or no go. Uh, I'm not in the position of say you can join up, but I, I think it's worth asking Brent. And if he's still present, he can make he can give a brush up on the uh, on the possibilities of joining. Otherwise, uh, my name and mail address is here at the end, so uh, you're always welcome to contact us, and we have always coffee on the pot if somebody's in the area. Otherwise, uh, I think that was the time that was given to me more or less. So, any questions? <clears throat> One second. <laughs> uh, thank you, Tony. Uh, this is Brent Somerville. Um, yeah, thank you, Brent. Yeah, yeah we, we are hosting, um, well, NREL has, has contracted with Rick Damiani and Dean Davis, a couple of uh, uh, talented engineers to lead a project on um, improving air elastic modeling for distributed wind. And we are holding a workshop on October 5th and 6th, coming up soon to gather input from um, experts in the field that have experience using air elastic modeling tools like OpenFast and Hawk2 uh, with an effort to gain some uh, input on how could modeling be better, what, what gaps are, are, are there, and what opportunities exist to improve things. And, and who can uh, maybe supply or measure data useful for validation efforts. So if you are interested in participating in this workshop um, on October 5th and 6th, uh, let me know. I'll put my email address in the chat right now. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Bruno. Yep. Any other questions, Daniel, from the, from the chat? Mm -hmm. Or... or It doesn't look like. Uh, thanks, Tony. You're but uh, yeah, you can also stay, of course. Yeah. Uh, I know that uh, also uh, Mike Bell is online. I don't know if uh, if you can hear us, Mike, because uh, he will also host a small wind conference in uh, I think in February. Right. Yeah. Right. I, yeah. yeah. So. Um... Yeah, so the American Distributed Wind Energy Association will uh, hold its conference that we've rescheduled four times this year. So we're, <laughs> no. we're yeah, so um, the um, hotel is still speaking with me. That's the good news. Um, but we're going to push to um, late uh, February, early March uh, in Washington, D.C., and, and it's uh, both a technical conference and a uh, lobbying conference opportunities so um that's it's unfortunate but the covid uh, pandemic is still raging here and um vaccination rates are below what they should be and um so travel it's just too risky to have it um in november as we uh, had had scheduled the last time so the board of directors has decided to move it um that information we uh, posted up on the, the WIA website within the next week or so. Uh, the program will still remain the same. And of course, we're very much interested in having participation either in person or, or um, uh, virtual. Um, I point out that the under President Biden, um, the Congress is proposing very substantial uh, subsidies for uh, clean energy, solar, and and all sorts of wind onshore and offshore, and the um, the uh, for example a, a ten year uh, uh, extension of the investment tax credit at thirty percent, 
um, lots of funding for grants for agricultural applications. So far, the farm market should be very robust. Uh, and um, it still remains to be seen whether that those policies will actually become law. Uh, politics, <laughs> politics in America is a contact sport. So, <laughs> so it's hard to say what will happen. But um, uh, we we're optimistic that the market uh, is going to be very strong uh, in America in the coming years. Good to you. Hey, Tony, while, while, I, while I have, while you're there, you did a, you call it a white book. We would say, is it like a white paper? So it's a, essentially a, you know, a description of the of bad policies and recommendations on what the good policies should be. Yeah. Is that available in English or only uh, yeah, in I, English? There could be some old ones, but uh, it, it sure needs an update. So, and I'll think about if you should translate it and distribute it within the small one community. Okay. Uh, DeWea did one, uh, or a what we call the strategic plan um, a few months ago. And, and so that's available if anyone is, is interested that covers the policies we thought would help spur the market. Yeah. Uh, I remember if you still have Morton on board here, who's chairman of the Danish uh, Small Wind Association, then uh, he might have some of it, but I don't know if he's still on board. He's here. He was here previously, but uh, no, uh, no mind. But I'll, uh, I'll let Morton know also, and uh, good, good to know, Mike. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> And uh, I'll just send out in the chat the, the link to our LinkedIn group. So that's uh, just a place to, to put together all the people that are interested in the small, medium and distributed wind energy. And it's a, I mean, it's a self-driven group. So we are, we are posting things, but uh, you're also welcome to do it. So anytime you have any news, anything, a uh, new product or something, you can just put it in there so that uh, you are targeting a very, very defined group. And uh, yeah, uh, it's also a way to help each other in helping in finding out what's going on in the industry. Because uh, one of the issues we have found out also with having conferences so often is that we often don't have enough time to have new things happen. So that's also what we are discussing now for the when should be the next one, if it should be in six months, if it should be in a year or, or what, and we will come back to that, of course, so that you, you know it as soon as possible. But uh, yeah, if you have any news, any product, uh, anything that you think it could be interesting for the community, feel free to join and invite colleagues. Otherwise, yeah. yeah it's, uh, like it's networking time now, so if anyone has any question to previous speakers, uh, some of them have left, but... Uh, oh, good recommendations. Uh, yeah, exactly. Interesting uh, market info. Huh? Yeah. Not that we're chasing feeding tariffs because... Uh, <laughs> well, in Mexico, they still have them, right? Yeah, they still have them. Yeah, but... Uh, I don't know, it, it doesn't look like right? it's also has been quite a long day. And uh, I imagine, especially for those that uh, haven't had the, the time zone of uh, the, their favor, that must have been quite tough. But uh, yeah, as uh, Fritz just suggested, uh, well, the picture I was about to say, it, so it would be great if you could all take uh, the camera on so that I can take some screenshots. And then we can have a little bit, uh, yeah, it's one. Please mm -hmm. on. Yeah, yeah. So, so if you can take the camera on, I will take care of the screenshot. Little by little. Mohammed is probably driving out to visit the turbines. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, hi there. Hi. Um, I had a question about, uh, well, I would like to know where is um, uh, Martin? Martin? Yeah, but he should. Uh... Is Martin there? I think so. 
he, he is uh, online. Uh, he just uh, signed in and then he's falling asleep. <laughs> he's getting here afternoon nap. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, I'm driving because uh, and it's uh, hard to speak uh, right now. But I yeah. will talk with you uh, in next. Uh, yeah, but I do. just send the mail, Muhammad. Then we'll take it from there if it is. Yeah, good. So I take one more. Uh, people are a little bit shy, so not everyone is opening the camera, but that's also okay. <laughs> Yes, but uh, you, you didn't miss any, you, you didn't miss anything at the wind fair, just to say it uh, openly. So those of you who didn't go, uh, yeah. yeah. So anything more? Look like. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I would like to thank you, all the participants, of course, uh, especially the speakers and all those that had a bad time, time zone. Uh, then uh, the World Wind Energy Association and the Danish Association for Small Wind Turbines. And of course, also the Center of Energy Technology of Foros University, who has uh, supported basically this, uh, this organization. And uh, yeah, we hope that uh, you, you could uh, enjoy the event despite the many changes. And we hope to see you soon at the next event. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for, thanks for holding the event. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.